disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? That's no, they suck. I've been telling you all season, Philly. They shit on you. They shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me? You're in the uh. Like, they shit on you. They shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't. Don't you hear me, Jordan? Jalen uh, Carter, like they shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness! Did he say they they cock it on them? I hate the style. Of defense. I well, good. Friday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. You know, I love being at the Red Brick House, but I also love being here in, in my man cave. And you know, um, I've got to start thinking because the season's upon us and every year i always do something different to upgrade what we're doing with the joe boo sports report and mike any ideas uh, we haven't changed anything in here i mean you know we did do the outdoor studio although we didn't use it very much last year huh wait till later Okay, well, we'll figure it out. We got to do something to kind of upgrade and everything else because we are not far away. In fact, I need to get this clock going because I, I can't seem to get the programming to figure it out. But I need to get my countdown clock to the season and stuff going. Yeah, well, we, it's it's the 20, 21st already. Uh, the 23rd, well, a month and two days, uh, the Cowboys report to training camp and open camp on the 24th so we are short timing right now now here's the discussion to have right now and this is funny because i was watching um uh damian woody and stuff they were having a discussion about uh somebody came out with two teams that had three players that were in the top basically taking up 10 percent of the cap or more each and they use the Raiders. I don't know that, you know, you look at the Raiders and say that they've done anything that's correct. Okay. Because the Raiders, of course, had Derek Carr. Okay. Derek Carr, they went out and got Devontae Adams. I don't know if the reason that they didn't win was because they paid those three players. Because it didn't prevent them from bringing in players. Because they had all the players. I think the problem on that one is, I think it's, you're flawed if you use that and say the reason that they could not win was because they paid three players a lot of money. I think the problem was their quarterback sucked. Sorry. I know that Colin Cowherd has you know, said that we should have let Dak walk before and save money and traded for Derek Carr. You know, I know New Orleans and everything else that, hey, you know, forget Jameis Winston, even, uh, Jameis Winston uh, even though he did have 30 TDs and was actually playing well. Let's go get Derek Carr. And you see how that's been a disaster. And I still believe that if Dak Prescott's a free agent, they, they they lose that zero and they try and get Dak Prescott. And I think Dak Prescott would be interested in playing in Louisiana because that is his home state if it's not with the Cowboys. But the thing, the other example they had was where after winning the Super Bowl, Aaron Donald was getting paid. Um, of course, Matthew Stafford was getting paid. And I can't remember who else um was getting paid, but they were basically in the reload mode. So I don't know that you can really count that one and say the reason why they didn't win was because they paid those guys. You could actually look and say it wasn't because of those three guys, because those three guys were all performing. You could look and say they ended up bringing in, you know, uh, damn, I can't remember. Oh, Odell Beckham Jr. They brought in Von Miller. It wasn't. It wasn't because they paid those guys and they couldn't put the team around. They put the team around those guys. They won the Super Bowl. They rewarded them. They got rid of all those other bloated contracts, and here they are. They were back in the playoffs last year when people didn't expect it. <clears throat> so, I have to say that that whole concept that they came up with is bullshit. Uh, you know, and, and this is where you're telling me there's only two examples of this. 
If it's only two examples, that's not enough to make a decision on whether or not. I'm sorry. If it's two, two times, that's literally flipping a coin twice and saying, we know exactly what the next one's going to be. I'm sorry. Especially when you're talking about the Cowboys that even if they didn't pay those guys, they're still not going out to bring any other players. So you have to look at it and say, is this a flawed um, poll? so to speak but in this discussion they're talking about who you know who do you pay if you're going to only pay two which two do you pay which two do you pay we can look and say minnesota decided we're going to pay justin jefferson and we're going to let kirk cousins go we'll see how that works out we'll see how that works out having a great wide receiver without a great quarterback because we saw like Devonte adams go on a team that actually had Josh Jacobs, had Hunter Renfro, um, had uh, the tight end, what's his name, uh, that just retired uh, for the Giants. And your problem was your quarterback. Your quarterback couldn't get it done with all of these weapons. And I don't know that had they not been paying him that they would have been able to bring in any other players. I mean, good Lord, you had you know great players throughout the roster. You just failed. But... One of the things that I've kind of said that when you look at championship teams for about the last, you know, 10, 15 years, they all have one thing in common, and that is an incredible tight end. You can look at like Gronk and Hernandez, how they were, the two of those guys were incredible till Hernandez went Hernandez. But you look at the the Dallas Goddards, you look at uh, the Travis Kelseys, you look at the George Kittles, you look at the Gronks, you look at these teams that always seem to have a lights out tight end. But how many times have we seen the best wide receivers in the Super Bowl win in the Super Bowl? And see, the thing I've said about the Cowboys when Dak Prescott got here, it was the tail end of Jason Witten's career. This is no disrespect to Jason Witten. But here's the reality of what Jason Witten was the last part of his career. Incredible blocker, great pass catcher, but slow as turtle caca. And teams looked and they said, do we want Amari Cooper to get the ball and be able to go to the house? or Terrence Williams to get the ball and maybe go to the house, or Michael Gallup, or are we better off leaving Jason Witten open, knowing that he'll catch the football for six, seven, eight, nine yards, but he ain't breaking anything. Teams picked their poison and said, let's leave him open. He wasn't the guy that he was back at like 210, 11, 12, 13, 14 and all. And after Jason Witten, and between him going to the Raiders, and again, we know the Raiders are always bringing in everybody and paying them. Um, the Raiders, Monday Night Football, and then coming back to the Cowboys, the Cowboys had nobody. The Cowboys had nobody. And it wasn't until Dalton Schultz two years ago that you had an 800-yard receiving tight end, although Dalton Schultz, you know, he was good. But he wasn't exceptional. Last year, you could look and start to see how Jake Ferguson was becoming a great weapon and that quarterback's best friend. And you've got, of course, Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott at tight end U, getting an extra work with all the tight ends, including his and Jake Ferguson. So the question now is, Cowboys have limited funds. Who do you pay? Do you pay C.D. Lamb and say, we got to have that guy because he's an incredible weapon, sells a lot of jerseys, it's exciting, and he'll help us win a Super Bowl and let Dak go, and then I have somebody to get him the ball? Or do you pay Dak and you let C.D. go and you spend the money on offensive line, running back, and other things like that? Although it's a mute point for this year, even if you don't sign him to an extension, he will play. Not happy, but he'll play. But be that as it may. Or do you pay Micah Parsons? But the thing with the Cowboys is, I don't think we really have to make this decision right now 
because the Cowboys probably won't do Micah Parsons deal right now. They probably won't because that's not what they do. They don't ever pay anybody early. But let's go to this discussion because I think that this is actually really deep because it touches on a couple of points. Tight end is huge. Two teams in recent history, at least, have had more than 10% of their cap assigned to three different players. In 2022, both the Raiders and the Rams did it. Wow. Star players, Derek Carr, Devontae Adams, Max Crosby, Matthew Stafford, Aaron Donald, Cooper Cup. No issue with those deals, but those teams both had losing records. So it's tough to maybe surround those stars with enough to go on a big winning streak. Very interesting. Basically, what Barnwell is laying out is if the Cowboys go through with what many people think they should go through with, which is, in essence, make Micah close to the highest paid or the highest paid defender, make CeeDee Lamb close to or the highest paid receiver, make Dak Prescott close to or the highest paid quarterback, based on past, it does not work. Mm -hmm. You don't have the resources necessary to fortify other aspects of your team. So if we know that, why are we constantly talking about the fact that they need to get this stuff done? So for me, even though you certainly want to hang on to a Micah Parsons and you certainly want to hang on to a CeeDee Lamb, it's the Dak Prescott. <laughs> of course, because you don't need a quarterback. Cowboys, because you really can't win in the NFL unless you have a franchise quarterback. And Dak Prescott played like an MVP last year. He's coming off arguably the best season of his entire career. And the Cowboys are a team that should have that high, high sense of urgency to win a Super Bowl. They have a lot of pieces in place to be competitive and be a contender. And I don't know why they would risk giving Dak Prescott the opportunity to walk away and not lock him up earlier. He would be the first one in theory I'd extend. Micah would be second, CD would be third. And I, lo I think CD Lamb's awesome. I just don't he think is. his position, the value at that position mm -hmm. is as great as pass rusher or passer, obviously, at the quarterback position. This is an interesting again, conversation. It seems like they're trending towards potentially getting something done with Micah and CD, and Dak is nowhere to be. I mean, we're at a point now where we're closing in on Dak may say, hasn't said this yet, now nah, I'm good. We'll talk after the season. Because if, if that happens, which it's not impossible to think it could, mm -hmm. then he's an unrestricted free agent. They, cannot, they could not franchise. They're not allowed to based on the contract. He's not restricted, meaning they control <coughs> the offer that someone else would make, and then they could match that. Or they don't control that offer. They can match any offer. He can go anywhere. I mean, as the days go on, I don't know how we could sit here and, and assume that this is anything but Dak Prescott's last year in Dallas. And I don't know why Dallas would want to put themselves in that position because if Dak isn't your guy, what's the plan? Trey Lance? I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, they that have... Feels okay. like a huge roll of the dice, no? In, yes and no, because in theory, you have a top three draft pick on your roster at the quarterback position who's, what, 25, 26 years old, whatever he is? <laughs> mm -hmm. Isn't that the dream? Isn't that what we always say? You know, like, you know, draft a quarterback when you want one, not when you need one. QB rules. They didn't draft Trey Lance, but in essence, he's waiting in the wings for Dak Prescott to be to to move on for him to get the training to go be the starting quarterback. It actually, in theory, makes a lot of sense. The reality is, why would San Francisco get rid of him if, if he was good? There you go. Good? Or if he was good, excuse me. Yeah, why would they go with Mr. Irrelevant and Brock Purdy over the guy they drafted number three overall if they felt like he could be the guy? Don't know the answer to that question. And that's why it's hard to sit here and imagine, oh, yeah, Trey Lance is the guy. Now, maybe they know something we don't. Maybe Trey Lance is awesome. Maybe Trey Lance has shown them so much in practice where they realize, you know, we could, we could be really good with this guy. And he makes, in, in NFL terms, nothing. And we could even extend him now, hypothetically. We could extend him now for seven million dollars a year and he's gonna have to take it mm -hmm. because if he doesn't play and he's just on the open market as a backup quarterback he's not going to get a lot of money no guarantees mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. know he could be good we'll extend him long term i'm saying that knowing also he may not even make the team for all we know like i have no idea if that guy is good but it is an answer to your question of what is the plan but barnwell laid out there that if they are to pay max value let's say and and mm -hmm. top of the market value to all three of those guys it is more likely than not they will end up with a losing record based on the recent past of the the half the the cap or 10 percent each 10 plus percent each of those three right we saw it in 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 with the raiders and we saw it with the rams that it does not work out in any way shape or form 
And I think that's what he's saying is if the Cowboys do that, expect them to actually have a losing record as a result of doing that. So <laughs> that and taking that into account, I love it. if you were Jerry Jones and you were forced with this decision, what would you do? I think at this point, if I am not confident in Mike McCarthy to be my head coach long term, which I think is okay, I want to stop here for one second. So let me let me just ask you hypothetically, everybody, ask you hypothetically. Do you look at the Dallas Cowboys right now, and let's say they go ahead, they get C.D. Lamb done. Let's say they get C.D. Lamb done. Let's say they just do Justin Jefferson's contract. Justin Jefferson's contract. And they go from $17.9 million uh, cap hit to $8 million, okay? And get $10 million more cap space this year. Let's say they go through, as currently constructed, and they get Dak Prescott's deal done, and they still take the $55 million hit this year, but they clean it up for next year, or maybe they reduce it by another 10. And then all of a sudden, they have $30 million right now, which they probably won't spend. And they, of course, have Micah Parsons as well, get him done, using some of that money, although... <coughs> <coughs> They can end up basically keeping Micah Parsons' number at the five million this year and start the money out next year or even the year after. They could push it down the road like other teams. Do you see that situation where the Dallas Cowboys, because they signed those three players this year, hypothetically, that they're going to have a losing record because they did? That they're going to have a losing record this year because they signed those three? I don't think so, but go on. It's a mistake that they're not. I like Mike McCarthy. And I'm not confident in this team making a big run this year. Maybe I do look to trade some guys. But if you weren't confident in Mike McCarthy, why wouldn't you fire him and bring in Bill Belichick? Don't know the answer to that. I would. I, it's, if I was running the team, but my feelings were those of theirs, like their feelings became mine, then yeah, that's what I would have done. Right? I'm, I'm paying Mike McCarthy one year. It's not like I'm Monty Williams in this, where I'm paying him $65 million over the course of five years. Right. Yeah, I have one year left, and now I have Bill Belichick. Of course I would want to do that. Right? I mean, he does. We've had a million calls and tweets on this saying it's a thing, and I'm, I'm unaware of it. Hunted meat as a gift to someone that you okay. keep in a second fridge in the garage. I'm, gonna, I'm serious. I'm going to these- go past the hunted meat part because this gets to be ridiculous. But hold on. That, that's a, that's that's a little barren because <laughs> this is where we start talking about the receiver. Let's part. talk about the Cowboys and and uh, Bill Barnwell, ESPN NFL reporter, had an interesting take on NFL Live yesterday. That basically, if you make a quarterback, wide receiver, and a defensive end slash outside linebacker, or really any three players, the highest paid players at their position in the sport, it usually doesn't work. And he cited two teams: the Raiders in 2022 and the Rams in 2022 that had that, and then also had a losing record. Can the Cowboys re-sign all three, and should they? Um, I think they can, but if you're talking about all three guys wanting top-of-the-market deals, it's just not going to It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I actually, you know, I had a, you know, I was thinking to myself when when the whole run of wide receivers, everyone was resetting the market and getting paid. I was thinking to myself, this is okay, where I was the last time a top-of-the-market wide receiver won a Super Bowl? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know when it was? 2015 Demarius Thomas. Wow. 2015 Demarius Thomas was the last wide receiver that had a top of the market deal and won a Super Bowl. Do it this. Think way. about that. Yeah. Wow. Think think about that. You know, as, as much as we love wide receivers and we see that market exploding, they're still a very dependent position. They're very they're dependent on Offensive line play, they're depending on who your quarterback is. So you got to have multiple things going your way yep. in order for that wide receiver to really go off. Mm-hmm. So, like, to really get back to your question, listen, I always, me, my philosophy mm-hmm. when it comes to football is very simple. The closer you are to the actual football, the more important you are to the game of football quarterbacks, protection, guys who get after the quarterbacks. I'm paying those guys first because they affect the game the most. Mm -hmm. Yes, are wide receivers growing as far as importance? Absolutely. 
But you don't need a top flight wide receiver to win a Super Bowl. So then do you think the 49ers should not sign Brandon Ayuk? Because he was on that FaceTime that made a lot of headlines. Yes, that I they do. Don't want me back. I do, but I think they should trade Debo Samuel. Ooh. Keep going. I think that because I can find other players that do what Debo Samuels can do. And that's not a slight against Debo Samuels. He's a fantastic player. But I can find other guys that can do that. Brandon Ayuk is one of the best route runners in the National Football League. Those, are hard, those guys are harder to find. Mm-hmm. So I would pay, and he's more durable. So I would rather pay that guy who more durable <coughs> can actually, you know, the whole route running aspect at his position, I'll pay that guy over the guy who's kind of a, I kind of label Debo Samuel as an offensive weapon because he can, he can do, he's multifaceted, but he also, he's also, you know, he also does have an injury history. I love what you're hmm. saying here. It's music to my this ears. This is interesting, somebody, isn't it? Damian Woody is somebody who absolutely believes, and I have the, the fun quarterback rules that I put out, pay, pay QBs to make wide receivers great. Don't pay wide receivers to make quarterbacks great. You're saying this at a perfect time. Dak Prescott went to the tight end U that, that Kittle and Kelsey and everybody do in Nashville and said to them, per Stephen Holder, reporter for ESPN.com, you guys are a quarterback's best mm-hmm. friend. I've made the case forever. I would pay a, tight, a great tight end more than I'd pay a great wide receiver. Do you agree with that? Like, I would pay Travis Kelsey in his prime or Gronk in his prime mm-hmm. more than I would pay, and I love more this. Bang more bang for your I buck. Pay Randy Moss. I will say this. It's not it's apples or oranges, though. It's easier to take away a great wide receiver than a great tight end. Why? Because defenses, I can scheme. I can lean coverage towards a, a great wide receiver and get and take him away. But when you have a great tight end, you can deploy him anywhere. Mm-hmm. You can put him outside the numbers. You can put have, do most of his work inside the numbers. It's hard to take away a guy when he's operating between the numbers. It's just, it's that's just reality. As opposed to a wide receiver who's outside the numbers, it's easier to take him away. So if you're saying this, and somebody as smart as you is saying this, and as dumb mm-hmm. as I am is saying this, how come the league doesn't agree with our assessment? It's of a this? passing league. Mm-hmm. It's a passing league. Just look at. You know, it, it, that's just the way the league is set up right now. It's yep. a passing league. Um, and I kind of go back to, remember back in the day, the best, your best athletes were running backs? Yeah. Because the game was about running the football. Where has it trended towards now? Where are your best athletes now? Wide receiver, quarterback. Because mm-hmm. that's where the game is trended. And it starts – you know, start at the collegiate level where just how the game We'll, we'll go ahead and end it right there. But that's the thing that I've always said that has been missing on the Cowboys' offense. Because you think about <clears throat> the last time when we lost to San Francisco and you saw George Kittle going down the seam and making that catch where uh, Diggs is looking and saying, do I really want to hit this big guy and knock the ball away or possibly intercept it? He didn't want to get in front of that thing. And you got that big body that can do so many things. He can help out in your running game, blocking. He can basically be a decoy in the blocking game and become a receiver. He is, of course, the security blanket. And you got to look at it from the standpoint and saying, if I can only pay two, I need that edge rusher and I need the quarterback, but I also need the tight end. Now, that's not me saying let's get rid of CD because I think if the Cowboys were to actually do uh, to to understand how to use the cap, since they're not really using it on anybody else right now, they have space that they can get these guys up here and done. It's just a matter of will they or won't they? All right, good people. As always, I appreciate you guys. Hope you tune in tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern for our live stream we'll be of course kicking it live we'll be giving away some more of the autograph pieces um i think we'll we'll give away randy white tonight yeah we'll give away randy white tonight um during our live stream and tomorrow we'll be at the csa show in chantilly virginia where michael Irvin will be there charles haley will be there and jay novacek and we will get some more of these things autographed for you guys and Emmett Smith, but Emmett's too expensive. I, I, I don't have Emmett Smith type money to get his autograph. I'm sorry, I, I just, I, I just don't. Okay, but but you will at least get a sticker from Emmett Smith's company that says it's authentic. As always, peace out.
Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Thank you.